Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the AW Dynamite review. Dynamite tonight was from the Daily's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. So they were back at Daily's Place uh, tonight for the show. And Dynamite tonight was called New Year's Smash. And this Dynamite uh, was the final Dynamite on TNT next week. Uh, they will be moving to their new home on TBS. So it was a good two-year run for uh, Dynamite on TNT. But the final Dynamite on TNT was a very good show tonight. It was very enjoyable. A lot of good matches. And we had a 10-man tag team match. It was Private Party and Matt Hardy and FTR versus Christian Cage, Lucha Brothers, and the Jurassic Express. We had Eddie Kingston, Santana Ortiz, uh, taking on Daniel Garcia and 2.0. We had the semifinals match of the TBS Women's Championship Tournament. The winner will get to face Ruby Soho next week on the first Dynamite on TBS. And we will crown a new TBS Women's champion. So the semifinals match tonight was Jay Cargill versus Thunder Rosa. And in the main event, it was a trios tag team match. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish versus the best friends. But overall, Dynamite New Year's Smash tonight was a good show. Very enjoyable show. And, of course, like I said, the final Dynamite on TNT. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. Dynamite New Year's Smash opened up tonight with the return of one of the greatest commentators in professional wrestling. And that person is good old JR, Jim Ross. JR ended up uh, making his return to the commentary table uh, tonight on Dynamite. He's been out because he had uh, cancer treatment. So it was good to hear JR back on commentary. Missed hearing uh, him on commentary. And he looks healthy. He looked good. And the Jacksonville crowd was happy to see him. So glad that. Uh, he returned tonight and is back on the commentary table. And then we had the 10-man tag team match where it was the Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Christian Cage, and the Lucha Brothers versus Matt Hardy, Private Party, and FTR. And this was a good 10-man tag team match. Really enjoyed this match. The wrestling uh, in this matchup was good. It was very enjoyable. The match started off with Christian Cage and Cash Wheeler in the ring. So Cage, Christian Cage, end up hitting a flapjack on Cash Wheeler. He started alone on some punches in the corner to Wheeler. Dax Harwood end up trying to help uh, Wheeler, but we had Christian Cage end up delivering some fists to Harwood. Christian Cage end up tagging in Jungle Boy and Harwood end up coming in. Harwood end up attacking Jungle Boy in the corner. And Jungle Boy end up turning things around, delivering a chop to Harwood and some back elbows. Jungle Boy then delivered a drop kick to Harwood. Christian Cage end up coming back in. He leapt over the rope. He ended up slapping Dax Harwood before uh, Jungle Boy uh, was brought back into the match. So Jungle Boy was looking to go for the snare trap. Cash Wheeler ended up breaking that up. And he tagged in Isaiah Cassidy. So Isaiah Cassidy ended up getting taken down for, by the Lucha Brothers. The Lucha Brothers ended up doing the double team on Cassidy. Jungle Boy ended up leapfrogging from the Lucha Brothers, he ended up drop kicking Mark Gwen. 
So we had uh, Jungle Boy end up getting dropped down by Isaiah Cassidy. So Pirate Party end up uh, getting taken out by Jungle Boy. We had uh, Matt Hardy end up getting into the ring. Matt Hardy end up delivering a side effect onto Jungle Boy. So Jungle Boy uh, was sent into the corner by Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy ended up slowing down uh, the match a little bit, ended up working at a slow pace. So Penta ended up coming in. He ended up pinning the sling blade to both uh, Isaiah Cassie and Mark Gwen. Him and Phoenix end up taking out Dax Harwood with some kicks. So both uh, FTR, Cash Wheeler, and uh, Dax Harwood were dropped with a double DDT by Phoenix and Penta. Phoenix then ended up hitting a Sento to Mark Gwen, and he went for the cover. Gwen ended up kicking out. So we had both Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Gwen. Uh, they were working together to flip uh, Phoenix in midair, and then a plan of Phoenix to the mat. Harwood ended up coming in, delivered some uh, leg drops to Phoenix. Harwood ended up sending Phoenix onto the top turnbuckle, and Phoenix ended up chopping Dax Harwood, and he ended up getting sent to the floor, and Phoenix ended up following that up with a awesome uh, looking moonsault. So he ended up hitting the moonsault to both uh, Harwood and Wheeler. It was cool. It was a cool little spot there by uh, Phoenix. So at the end of the match, we had FTR end up hitting the big rig on Christian Cage. And so there you go. FTR, Private Party, and Matt Hardy ended up winning the match. But overall, this was a very good 10-man tag. The wrestling here was very good. It was enjoyable. Love a uh, little spot uh, with Phoenix when he did the moonsault and dropped both uh, guys in FTR, you know, Harwood and Reeler. So, but very good match. Very good 10-man tag match. So then we had Eddie Kingston. Santana and Ortiz versus 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. Eddie Kingston, he's been in this feud with Daniel Garcia and 2.0. And when Dynamite came back from the commercial, we had Eddie Kingston end up coming out. And Eddie Kingston wasted no time. He just went after uh, 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. So Matt Lee... He tried to attack Eddie Kingston, and he ended up quickly taking control and head out of the ring. So we had Kingston end up taking Matt Lee out. And then we had Eddie Kingston, Santana and Ortiz versus 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. Eddie Kingston has been in this feud between 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. You remember this started last month on Dynamite where uh, Daniel Garcia ended up throwing hot coffee into Eddie Kingston's face. And then Kingston and Daniel Garcia had a match on Rampage. And uh, Daniel Garcia ended up grabbing uh, a handful of tights on Kingston and uh, won the match. And it was... Daniel Garcia 2.0 and the acclaimed end up beating down on Eddie Kingston. So this is how this uh, feud rivalry has been going with Eddie Kingston 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. But this was a pretty uh, decent match up here. Pretty decent tag team match. So we had 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. They were already in the ring as Dynamite came back from the commercial. So, Eddie Kingston, Santana Ortiz made their way out. Eddie Kingston wasted no time. He rushed into the ring as 2.0 and Daniel Garcia end up uh, retreating out of the ring. The match started off with Matt Lee. He was trying to attack Eddie Kingston. 
but he quickly uh, took control. He ended up heading out of the ring. Everyone started brawling on the outside. So we had Matt Lee end up attacking Eddie Kingston from behind. It allowed Jeff Parker to continue the, the attack on Kingston. So Ortiz uh, later on end up uh, coming in. He ended up picking up the pace of the match. So him and Santana started work together uh, with some strikes to, uh, to Jeff Parker. And then Daniel Garcia ended up coming in. Daniel Garcia ended up in the elbow from uh, Ortiz. So Kingston later on was in the match. Kingston ended up biting the side of Daniel Garcia's head in the corner. Matt Lee was able to make a tag. He ended up changing up the momentum of the match. They started uh, you know, quickly on Ortiz. So uh, we had uh, 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. They were making... Uh, frequent tags to take down Ortiz. So Daniel Garcia ended up blocking the submission on Ortiz. It led to Eddie Kingston uh, coming in, breaking up the uh, submission. So Ortiz was able to tag in Eddie Kingston. Kingston ended up dropping everybody. He started charging into each corner. And he started alone on Daniel Garcia with some chops. Eddie Kingston ended up delivering a suplex to Jeff Parker. Santana ended up coming back in, delivered a run and boot to Matt Lee. But at the end of the match, we had uh, Matt Lee end up rolling up uh, Santana. He ended up getting a handful of uh, tights, and he stole the win. So there you go, 2.0, and Danny Garcia ended up winning the match. Post-match 2.0, and Danny Garcia ended up being down on Eddie Kingston, Santana Ortiz. Daniel Garcia ended up getting the ring bell. He brought the bell into the ring, and Daniel Garcia ended up smashing uh, the ring bell into Santana's head. And then out came Chris Jericho. Jericho ended up returning tonight, and he had Floyd in hand, you know, of course, the bat. And we had 2.0 with Daniel Garcia end up retreating out of the ring. So we had the Jacksonville fans, they were singing Judas. Eddie Kingston ended up demanding that the song be cut. And Eddie Kingston was questioning why Jericho is here. Like, what is Jericho doing? So Eddie Kingston ended up saying that he doesn't need Jericho's help. So pretty much that was basically that. But overall, this was a decent tag team match between Kingston, Santana Ortiz, 2.0, and Danny Garcia. In no way this uh, feud is over between Kingston, uh, 2.0, and Danny Garcia. It's going to continue, of course. So, but It was a decent match. Decent tag team match. And then we had MJF. MJF was backstage with Warlow and Sean Spears. MJF was talking about unsafe working conditions. He up saying that he was thrown out of the ring by an untrained sting. MJF wanted to say that if he was working for a more professional company, things wouldn't happen. So he ended up saying that this is a conversation for the bidding war of 2024. Because that is when MJF's contract is up. And you know, there's talks about WWE have an interest in MGF. And I'm like, if MGF went to WWE, he would not say in his promos what he has to say. He would be handed a script for these lines for him to say. That is what would happen if MGF went to WWE. WWE would offer him scripted lines for him to say. MGF, to me, will be an AW for lifer, in my opinion, hopefully. So we had Mark Sterling, smart Mark Sterling, end up showing up. And he ended up reading Warlow's contract. 
and he was real Warlow that the terms of his contract say that any titles he might win are also property of MJF. So pretty much, basically MJF ended up saying that next week he will also start racking up some wins as well. So pretty much, basically that's that. So if Warlow ever wins any titles, that is property of MGF, which obviously that's probably not going to happen anymore because this signifies the breakup between MGF and Warlow. It's going to be coming. It's going to be coming soon. So. And then we had Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was backstage with the Lucha Brothers, Christian Cage, and the Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, and Lucha Source end up appearing. And he ended up saying that next week it's time for Lucha Brothers to put the titles on the line against his guys, against uh, Lucha Source and Jungle Boy. So Alex Abrahantes end up saying that he is supposed to be a tag team legend, that Christian Cage is supposed to be this tag team legend. But he can't even be a partner. He end, end up saying that if Jungle Boy is the future, he should consider letting go of the past. So they then accept the challenge. So next week, it's going to be the Lucha Brothers versus Jungle Boy and uh, Luchasaurus, the Jurassic Express, for the titles. So there you go. That's that. That's a match that. You know, looking forward to next week on Dynamite, the first ever uh, Dynamite on TBS. It's going to be a big show next week. And then we had Warlow versus Colin Delaney squash match. We had Warlow end up uh, delivering a elbow to Colin Delaney, and then he delivered a clothesline. Warlow dropped Delaney with a power bomb, and it led to the Jacksonville crowd chanting one more time to Warlow. So Warlow ended up hitting a second power bomb to Delaney, and then he went for two more uh, power bombs, and then he went for the cover. And there you go. Warlow ended up winning the match. Post match, Colin Delaney was hobbling to the back. He went past Sean Spears which uh, he had a chair in hand. Sean Spears then ended up cheap-shotting Colin Delaney, nailing him with a chair shot to Delaney's back. So that was that. But overall, squash match. So then we had uh, the super click. We had uh, the Young Bucks... Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, all backstage. Adam Cole end up saying that they will be the best group ever. And Matt Jackson ended up pointing out that Kyle O'Reilly hasn't even said hello to him or Nick. He ended up saying, uh, sure, it isn't awkward. So Kyle O'Reilly ended up telling them all to leave, other than Adam Cole. So he ended up saying that he knows they have heat together. And tonight, he will find out if Adam Cole has his back. So, pretty much, uh, that was that. And then we went to Dan Lambert. Dan Lambert was in the ring with Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. Lambert ended up saying that nothing is cool about Cody Rhodes. And seeing Arn Anderson with him makes him sad. Lambert wanted to say that Arn used to be a horseman, and now he is just a whore. You know I'm saying? That this is a perfect segue for Brandy, for Brandy Rhodes. So then Ethan Page ended up mocking Brandy for being a wrestler. Lambert then ended up mocking Cody's uh, neck tattoo, ended up saying that he never really made it until he cut a backstage deal with Tony Khan. He ended up saying that he sat AW fans might be idiots. 
but even they don't like the shit sandwich he is shoving down their throats. So Brandy Rose then end up coming out. She ended up calling Dan Lambert a less talented version of Paul Heyman. So Lambert ended up replying back saying, oh, he doesn't prefer Paul Heyman. He prefers Jim Cornette. So Brandy ended up asking Lambert when the last time he got beat up by a woman and didn't have to pay for it. So Brandy ended up saying that she will whoop Lambert's ass tonight for free. So Lambert ended up saying that there isn't a person who wouldn't want to slap him. If he can do that, he would be lucky. So Brandy ended up saying that if Lambert is a black belt, she's a black bitch. So Dustin Rose then ended up coming out to calm it all down. And then Scorpio Sky ended up attacking Dustin Rose from behind. And him, Ethan Page, and Lambert end up walking away. So that was that. Well, overall, this segment here was just very meh, in my opinion. I mean, Lambert's, uh, you know, good on the mic and all. But overall, with Brandy in this segment, it's just was just very meh, in my opinion. And Ethan Page mocking Brandy for being a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, I got to agree with Ethan Page because Brandy, whenever she was in the ring, she was absolutely fucking terrible. Brandy Rhodes was absolutely terrible in the ring whenever she uh, had a match. So he went to a video package. Uh, it was shown about the AEW World Championship match between Hangman Page and Brian Danielson, which is going to be their uh, rematch because their, uh, their last match went to a draw. So JR ended up saying that the judges are a recipe for chaos. Tony Schiavone ended up saying that he always thought uh, Brian would be the next AEW World Champion. So Scalibur then ended up believing that Brian could win the AW World Championship next week. So we'll have to see. So we got that uh, video package. And then we had Jay Cargill versus Thunder Rosa. This was a semifinal match in the TBS Women's Championship Tournament. The winner gets to face Ruby Soho. Next week on Dynamite. And the winner will be the new TBS Women's Champion. Obviously, we all know who it's going to be. Obviously, we all know Ruby Soho is going to uh, win the match. She's going to be the first ever TBS Women's Champion. Jay Cargill ended up coming out first along with uh, Mark Starlin. And then Thunder Rosa made her way out. Thunder Rosa was dressed as Wolverine. Uh, which was cool. So the match started off with Thunder Rosa charging at Jay Cargill. She ended up going for a low drop kick to Cargill, which sent Cargill out of the ring. Mark Sterling got involved, and Thunder Rosa ended up taking out Mark Sterling with a somersault from the ring apron. And Cargill ended up attacking Thunder Rosa as she turned her back. So... Cargill ended up catching Thunder Rosa in midair, dropped her onto the ring apron. So we had uh, Thunder Rosa end up coming back. She ended up attacking uh, Jay Cargill's knee. And she ended up hooking uh, Cargill's leg over the guardrail, ended up attacking it. And Thunder Rosa was just working on uh, Cargill's leg. So Cargill ended up firing back later on. She ended up launching Thunder Rosa into the barricade. So this was, you know, all out. This was all out of the ring on the outside. So Thunder Rosa ended up getting launched headfirst into the ring post by Cargill. So Thunder Rosa later on, she came back. She connected with an elbow to Cargill. Cargill ended up dropping uh, Thunder Rosa with a pump kick. So Thunder Rosa ended up picking up uh, Cargill's leg. 
She continued to attack uh, the leg of Cargill. So later on, we had Cargill end up looking for a delayed suplex on Thunder Rosa, but Rosa ended up reversing it. She tried to catch uh, Cargill with a pinfall. And she then ended up hooking Cargill on the middle rope, started attacking Cargill's leg again. So pretty much, basically, this match was Thunder Rosa just, you know, going for uh, Jay Cargill's leg. Thunder Rosa ended up dropping Cargill down to the bottom turnbuckle, ended up hitting another low drop kick. So Cargill ended up coming back, she ended up firing back, delivered a Samoan and drop, and a backbreaker to uh, Thunder Rosa. So Thunder Rosa ended up turning things around and she ended up locking in the figure four on Cargill. Cargill ended up reaching to the ropes and she ended up getting a uh, drink of water from Mark Sterling. Cargill ended up sending Thunder Rosa into the bottom turnbuckle and a person wearing a hood and a mask ended up blindsiding Thunder Rosa with this weapon. And it allowed Jay Cargill to hit Jaded on Thunder Rosa. So Cargill went for the cover. And there you go. Jay Cargill ended up winning the match. She will now get to face Ruby So next week on Dynamite to crown whoever will be the first ever TBS Women's Champion. So there you go. Post match, uh, Thunder Rosa ended up attacking Jay Cargill. And this hooded person end up attacking Thunder Rosa again. So this person end up taking the hood, taking off the hood and the mask. And it was revealed to be former NXT superstar Mercedes Martinez. So Mercedes Martinez was revealed to be the hooded person. Ruby Soho end up coming out. Ruby Soho came out holding a steel pipe, which caused Mercedes Martinez and Jay Cargill to run out of the ring. So, there you go. Jay Cargill versus Ruby So next week in the final match to crown uh, the first ever TBS Women's Champion. And obviously, we all know Ruby Soho is going to be uh, win the match. She will be the first ever TBS Women's Champion. Overall, this match with Jay Cargill and Thunder Rosa, it was a pretty good match. And then we had CM Punk. CM Punk ended up coming out. This was CM Punk's uh, first time ever in the Daily's Place. So Punk got on the mic. He ended up saying that it is awesome to see JR back at the commentary table. He ended up saying that he is the best to ever do it. Punk wants to say that he is all about giving people their flowers now. He kept saying that this place is a home for AEW. And it gets him thinking about Brody Lee. Punk wants to say that if there is anybody who says something to try and minimize the impact he made, that means they never met him. So those are good words there from uh, CM Punk there, just uh, talking about Brody Lee. Punk ended up saying that he watched the tribute show for his friend, and it made him want to come here. He ended up saying that this then makes him think about someone who isn't worth his time, and that one person is MJF. He wants to say that MJF is a Twitter troll in the flesh, and that he hides behind Harwood and Wheeler, FTR, like last week. And Punk went on to say that he is fine if MGF says that he's done with him, as he got to team with Sting and Darby Allin. Punk ended up claiming that he wants to be champion too. He ended up saying that being here in Daddy's place, there is bigger and brighter things on the horizon for him. He wants to say that MGF is a bigger waste of Tony Khan's money than Tim Tebow, <laughs> which... Uh, got a pop from the Jacksonville crowd, which that was uh, hilarious when Punk ended up mentioning uh, Tim Tebow. 
So Punk ended up saying that MJF found out the hard way, the hard way that on the mic, in the ring, and on commentary, nobody can touch him. So Punk ended up teasing that it would be a real shame if somebody messed with MGF's quest for gold. So pretty much that was basically what uh, Punk had to say. But this was a uh, good segment here by Punk. Really enjoyed it. So then we saw Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. Ricky Starks end up saying that ever since Dante Martin got involved with Leo Rush, things haven't gone well for him. Hobbs ended up questioning if uh, Dante Martin really wants to go a second round with him. So basically that's what they had to say about Dante Martin. And then we had Sammy Guevara. He ended up coming out with his cards. Sammy Guevara uh, lost the TNT Championship on Saturday night on Rampage to Cody Rhodes. And I'm like, that that is a WWE move right there. Giving Cody the TNT Championship for the third time. And you know what this uh, is going to lead to? It's going to lead to uh, them building up Hook. And Hook is going to be the one to take the TNT Championship off of Cody Rhodes. So we're going to have Cody Rhodes versus Hook at some point for the TNT Championship. And Hook is going to be the one to take the TNT Championship off of Cody Rhodes. So they're trying to make Cody be the John Cena Roman Reigns here. Where uh, he doesn't want to be a heel. Technically, uh, he is a heel, but they don't want to uh, mention it. They don't want uh, that to come and play. So, But, you know, when you have the fans booing at Cody, technically, he is a heel. But Cody is just like, oh, yeah, I'm a heel, but am I still a baby face? Technically, in Cody's mind, he's still a baby face, as he thinks it. But to the fans, he is a heel. But they don't want to, you know, have Cody go out there and deliver, you know, a heel promo. You know, Cody thinks, you know, he's still a baby face in his head. When the fans boo, you are technically a heel. So Sammy Guevara ended up coming out with his cards, recaps his time uh, when he was the TNT champion. He ended up saying that he has a resolution for 2022, which is to beat the American Nightmare and become TNT champion again. Technically, I don't think that's going to happen. I think uh, they moved on from Sammy Guevara and they're going to put Hook in uh, that situation to face Cody Rhodes. And Hook is, like I said, Hook is going to be the one to take the TNT Championship off of Cody Rhodes. And then we had Akaro Shida. Akaro Shida was shown in a video package. Akaro Shida ended up telling Serena Deeb to stop whining and for her to stop making excuses. She ended up saying that she can have another rematch. Which... We're possibly going to get. We're possibly going to get her Carl Sheeta versus Serena Deeb again. And then we saw Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was in the ring with Brian Pillman Jr. So Brian Pillman Jr. ended up saying that last week his brother walked into the House of Black. He had been in to not having much memory of that night. But he won't forget the bell ringing while Malachi Black tried to end Griff Garrison's career. He kept saying that when he got up, things got fuzzy and his memory went black as he was then laying on the ground himself. So Pillman Jr. ended up saying that now it is his turn to 
take a trip to the House of Black. You know what I'm saying? However, he won't barge down the door. He wants to say that he learned from his father, you only get one life. And he's not giving him his to Malachi Black, as he promises to be a new man next week. So he was like, oh, next week we're going to see a new Brian Pillman Jr. So then the lights went out in the Daily's place, and Malachi Black ended up appearing. So Malachi Black ended up pointing to the ring. Lights ended up going out again. And as the lights came back on, Black uh, disappeared. Nowhere to be found. And that was that. But I thought that was lame for Malachi Black to just be out there, point to the ring, light goes out again, and he disappears. I mean, I know it's Malachi Black playing mind games, but, you know, have him get face... They should have him got face-to-face -face with Brian Pillman Jr. And that's what I think they should have did. So, but overall, this was a good promo from Brian Pillman Jr. Absolutely, uh, really enjoyed it. So then... On Rampage this Friday, it's going to be Anthony Bowens versus Darby Allen, And we had a video package with uh, Bowens just uh, talking crap about Darby Allen. Darby Allen ended up delivering a video package, you know, just talking crap about Anthony Bowens. So that was that. So we're going to see that match this Friday on Rampage. Should be a good match up there. Main event. Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly versus uh, the best friends. Chuck Taylor, Trent, and Orange Cassidy. And this was a very good main event here. Kyle O'Reilly and Chuck Taylor end up starting off the match. And Kyle O'Reilly ended up taking Chuck Taylor down with a knee strike. Trent ended up coming in. And Trent ended up exchanging strikes and chops at Kyle O'Reilly. And Kyle O'Reilly ended up opting not to tag in Adam Cole. So he tagged in Bobby Fish. Orange Cassidy ended up throwing his glasses at Bobby Fish. And he ended up avoiding some strikes. And we had uh, Orange Cassidy end up putting his hands in his pockets. Adam Cole ended up rushing into the ring. He ended up dropping Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy ended up sending Adam Cole into uh, the best friend's corner. And the best friends uh, were working together to dominate on Adam Cole. Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish end up getting launched out of the ring. And we had a chant from the crowd of... Undisputed chance, which was awesome. So we had uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole, and Bobby Fish. They end up coming into the ring. They end up attacking the best friends. O'Reilly then end up in a sliding knee to Chuck Taylor, and then Bobby Fish end up coming back in. Adam Cole later on end up blindsiding Orange Cassidy on the ring apron with a super kick. Trent was able to tag in. He ended up dropping Adam Cole. He ended up avoiding an elbow drop on the outside from Kyle O'Reilly. And then he launched Bobby Fish out of the ring. Trent then ended up hitting a back elbow and a DDT onto Kyle O'Reilly outside of the ring. Trent ended up connecting with a double stomp to Bobby Fish. Trent then tagged in Orange Cassidy, who ended up taking Kyle O'Reilly down. He then ended up hitting a suicide dive to Bobby Fish. So we had uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish end up working together. They end up uh, taking down Orange Cassidy. Adam Cole then ended up nailing a super kick to Orange Cassidy. And we had uh, Chuck Taylor end up breaking up a pin. Trent then ended up appearing again. He ended up getting bounced off the top rope. Uh, Chuck Taylor 
end up being a super kick from Adam Cole on the uh, stage on the walkway. Cole was looking to go for the Panama Sunrise, but Chuck Taylor ended up reversing that. He ended up launching himself off the stage into Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. So we had Trent end up spearing Adam Cole as Orange Cassie ended up connecting with a top diving DDT. And he went for the cover. Cole ended up kicking out. So we had uh, Adam Cole was hit by two pile drivers and a beach break. Kyle O'Reilly then ended up starting to kick in Orange Cassidy. So we had Kyle O'Reilly. He was going to go for a big boot to Orange Cassidy, but Cassidy ended up moving out of the way. Kyle O'Reilly ended up nailing Adam Cole uh, with the big boot. Orange Cassidy ended up stealing the roll-up. And we had the best friends end up cleaning the house in the ring. They ended up doing the hug with the camera pan back a little bit. And then we have Brandon Cutler, the waste of space on the AEW roster. Brandon Cutler ran out to the ring. He was taken out, of course. So then the Bucks, the Young Bucks, end up uh, coming out. And they delivered a double super kick to uh, Orange Cassidy and uh, Chuck Taylor. So the match ended up uh, ending with... Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish uh, win the match. And we had uh, the Bucks. You know, they were uh, a little bit jealous. You know, with Kyle O'Reilly and uh, Bobby Fish there. You know, thinking that, oh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish is going to steal Adam Cole from uh, the Super Click. Because, you know, Matt and Nick are close with Adam Cole. So... Overall, this was a good main event. Really enjoyed it. Uh, love uh, that Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly are together again. And the crowd chanting Undisputed tonight uh, was awesome uh, there. But this was a good uh, Dynamite tonight. This was a very good uh, show to end uh, Dynamite's uh, two-year run on TNT. And next week... They'll be on TBS. And very uh, anticipated show. It's going to be next week on Wednesday night. You know, their first show on TBS. So, but anyways, that's it for my review of tonight's Dynamite, uh, New Year's Smash. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And... I'll see you all later.